Hi folks and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to do my September reading recap and give you a peek into my fall um, TBR. So let's get going. Okay, so September was a very low month for me. Um, I really thought I would go better than it did, but things just happen. So, um, the first book that I finished in September was When to Watch by Kate Stamen London. Um, I gave this one five stars. It was so fantastic. I read it on uh, my Kindle and, um, the basic premise is it's, it's a romance, uh, pretty much fully closed door romance. Um, and so the basic premise is, uh, this plus sized fashion blogger, um, basically takes to task on her blog, um, a reality show, which is more or less the equivalent of the bachelor, um, for their lack of diversity, like in all of the ways, but particularly, uh, in body shape and size. And so over after a series of events, she is approached to be the next like lead on the show. Um, the next Bachelorette. And so uh, it just follows her journey on the show. It was like the best season of The Bachelorette that I've ever watched, except that it was like in a book and <laughs> not real. Um, it was so charming. The characters were so well drawn. Uh, and I just completely fell in love with B, who is the main character, the, the heroine. Um, and it genuinely felt like watching the show, like, oh my gosh, who's she going to pick, you know, and how's it all going to shake out? And, and it just like some of the messages were just really, really positive. And, uh, I just, I loved it. It was such a fun reading experience, which, you know, who doesn't need that? Uh, so that was one to watch by Kate Steam in London. The next one I finished was an audiobook, And this one was Florence Adler Swims Forever. I gave this one three stars. It was, it was good. I really enjoyed it, uh, which is usually what my three star rating means. Um, it wasn't the best, um, but it wasn't terrible. I didn't hate it. And it was a good, it was a fine reading experience. Good. Um, and so this one was about a Jewish American family living in Jersey city, um, leading up to world war two. And so there's some of that element they do have, uh, this, the family that it's about has a um, young German, Jewish German girl who has um, come from Germany to stay with them um, basically as a refugee and they're working to get her parents over as well before things get bad enough that they can't. And so in the opening scene, uh, Florence Adler, Ad the Adlers is the main family, um, and Florence is the youngest daughter in this family. And she is a swimmer and she is training to uh, swim the English Channel. And so she goes out into the ocean to swim and um, she's with um, Anna, who's the, the German Jewish girl who is staying with them um, and her niece. Uh, and when F Florence goes out to swim and she drowns, she doesn't come back. Okay, that's not a spoiler. That's like the basic setup of the story. And so the mom, Esther, decides that they're going to keep Florence's death a secret from her older sister, Fanny, because Fanny is on bed rest in the hospital um, with her second, well, third pregnancy, really. Um, and they're terrified uh, that she's going to lose a baby because she's already lost one. And so Esther is frightened that if they tell her and about Florence dying, that the stress of that will uh, cause something to go wrong with the baby. And so it's just about all of the implications and what that does to the family and how they handle it and um, kind of Anna's story as she is trying to figure out how to get her parents over to America and, and just kind of all the family dy dynamics there. Um, it was, it was, it was, it was good. I can except the basic premise of uh, them not telling her to hopefully save the baby. However, they continue 
to make choices for her without telling her um, or allowing her any kind of input. And that was incredibly bothersome and troublesome to me. Uh, it, they basically took all agency away from her for her own life um, because of what they thought would be best for her. And I just have a real problem with that in general. <laughs> Um, women are entirely capable of making choices for their own lives that, you know, they decide what's best for them. Your dad doesn't get to do that. You know, your mom doesn't get to do that. Nobody gets to do that for you. So ultimately that's why it was not more than three stars. Cause I just couldn't, I couldn't get past that. So that was Florence Adler swims forever. I don't remember the author. Okay, and then the next book was Pippi Longstocking. Uh, this was the read aloud that we got through this month. I gave this one three stars. It's by Astrid Lindgren. And I mean, it's it's a classic children's um, story. It, the kids loved it. It's fun. It's quirky. Pippi is just, you know, she's a classic heroine of children's literature. I did have, I struggled a little bit with in reading it because Pippi makes a lot of claims about other cultures and people around the world because you know she claims that she's traveled everywhere with her father who's now cannibal king <laughs> that are clearly lies and like it's called out that they're lies in the story but um my kids are I, I don't know sometimes it was like hard to it was just hard to read, even knowing that like these things, she's just like making them up and like, you know, that's supposed to be obvious, but like, and this could just be because I chose to read this to my five and six year old who maybe couldn't like make that connection and like see that it was, they were clearly lies. Um, but so anyway, that was, that was kind of tricky, but overall, this is a classic. It's so so charming and um, funny. The kids laughed out loud several times. Um, and so, yeah, that's Pippi Longstocking by Astrid Lindgren. And then the last one, guys, this was not the best reading month for me, was Friends and Strangers by J. Courtney Sullivan. And I gave this one two stars. I did not like this book. And that was really disappointing because on paper, everything about this book should check all of my boxes. But the execution just, oh, it did not land at all. <sighs> I am not a person who needs, who's like, you will never hear me say, oh, I just need my characters to be likable. Okay, that's not, not something I need in my um, books, in my novels, because, um, most people are more complicated than that. And I want flawed characters. And I want, especially in a character-driven novel, which is what this one is, I want flawed characters. And I want to see, you know, a growth arc. Um, and even, even if there's not a growth arc, like, if it's just like a snapshot of this person and how flawed they are at this moment in time, like, I'm fine with that. But I just need to not like, I need like maybe a kernel of redemption, maybe. Um, not even that. That's not even it. I just need that to be well written and believable, I guess. Um, and in this story, sorry, my neighbor is doing something, building something. He's always building something. I don't know what it is, but it's like right outside my window here. So that's what that banging is. Um, anyway, there were no characters that I could root for or was even very interested in. They were all, um, horrible people, um, and annoying in their horribleness. Like there are characters that, um, are horrible, but I don't find annoying. <laughs> 
I feel like I'm contradicting myself like a lot here, but I just, I hated all of these characters and I didn't root for any of them. I didn't understand any of their motivations. I like, they just made terrible choice after terrible choice and reacted horribly to everything. It's very heavy handed in some of its commentary and opinions on certain things, which I love a good opinion. I've got lots of them and I'm not afraid to share them. I don't mind a book having a point of view, but it needs to be deftly done. And this was not that. It was like, let me tell you, like it didn't even, it did that thing where it tells and not shows. And that is just like, I don't know, for me in my fiction, I need that. That's like 101, you know, show, don't tell. And this book was all tell, no show. And it was, it was just bad. I hated it, which was really disappointing because Again, it's everything that I should love in a novel. Um, what I've read by J. Courtney Sullivan in the past, I've loved. And so this was just a big, big disappointment. Um, I did do this one on audio. Um, and often if I do a book on audio that I end up not liking very much, I think that there could be a chance that like if I had read it on paper, then I might give it like one more star than than I did because I listened to it. But this one, like, no, it was not good. I did not like this book. So that was Friends and Strangers by J. Courtney Sullivan. And that was all I read in the month of September. I did continue to work on Five Wives, which I did finally finish, but finished it like October 4th or something. So that will come in my um, October recap. So what I thought I would do um, is also just kind of give you my fall uh, beginning, like basically my TBR for the end of the year, through the end of the year. Um, and these are books that I definitely want to get to. Um, I'm always adding others in based on what I can get on audio because I always have at least one audio and one paper or Kindle book going. So, um, so yeah, so that's what I'm going to do now. So and these are all taken like right off my shelf um, that I've had forever that I just, I'm ready to actually get to. And I, this is like the time of year where um, these kinds of books call to me. This is basically like my slow, you know, cozy reading kind of thing. So the first one, is, and I started this last night and I'm already 50 pages into it. And I, oh, I can already tell you it's going to be like, probably number one um, of the year. And that is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Uh, if you don't know who Chanel Miller is, this is a memoir. She is the victim in the Stanford rape case. And I don't, you may recall uh, her victim statement was published in BuzzFeed and it was, it was really long and it went super viral and it was so beautifully written and so poignant and just unbelievably well done. Um, it, there's a reason it went viral. Um, she's a phenomenal writer. And I read that when it went viral and I kind of followed that case and was just like horrified at all of the details of that case um, that we were actually given in the press, which as you read was not everything obviously um and you definitely didn't get the victim's viewpoint because um at the time she was just known as Emily Doe she was she she was not named she was her name was legally protected um as the case was at trial and you know going on and so she finally she just she finally decided she was going to basically reclaim her identity because in all of that she felt as though she became just victim. She was flattened out to victim. And in fact, as all victims in um, sexual assault cases, uh, there's so much more than that. And they deserve to be the one um, at their discretion. They get, they should be able to reclaim that story and be the one telling that story when they're ready. And if they ever are ready and she was ready. And so that was something she chose to do. And I have had this, I bought this as soon as it was published last year in 2019. I just have had it sitting on my shelf because 
I like was trying to work myself up to it because even if this is not an experience you've had, it's incredibly difficult to read, um, especially at the very beginning because that's, that's when like you read about the actual events. Um, and so she is, I don't even know, I don't have words for Chanel. Um, I follow her on Instagram. If you don't, you should. She, she is just, I, all of the words that I can think of are too trite, I think, for what I really want to say. Like, inspiring is the wrong word. Um, a hero of mine, like a personal hero isn't even really right. I just am in awe of Chanel and her storytelling ability and the way she has um, taken control of this narrative. Uh, I'm just in awe of her and um, she's so vulnerable, um, not only in this writing, but on her um, on her Instagram, she writes these comics, um, especially like, you know, talking about her mental health battles and um, just kind of her response to what's going on in the world right now. Um, at the beginning of quarantine, she was just, she would go live and just read poetry late at night for people who were having trouble sleeping. And it, I, I just, I'm, and she's so kind and tender and gentle. And um, anyway, can't say enough good things about Chanel. Um, and also she and her sister uh, now are hosting a podcast called Childhood with Chanel and Tiffany. And it is just the most delightful thing where they just like ask each other questions about memories from their childhood. And then they talk and they giggle and they're just so sisterly. And if you know me at all, you know how much a sucker I am for anything that has to do with a solid sister relationship. So, and that is what they have. And you see that even, like I've seen that even in the first 50 pages of this book. So highly recommend the podcast, highly recommend Chanel in all the places. And I can already tell you, this is gonna be a favorite book of the year. So that was a lot of words about Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Okay, the next one I hope to read is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfag. And I actually think I'm going to do this on audio mostly. I, this one is from the library and I just don't know that I'm going to be able to get to the paper copy before I have to return it. But I, I found it, it was like immediately available on audio. So I think that this will be my audio book um, as I read Know My Name. So I have read Otessa Moshfeg's short stories, uh, a collection of her short stories, and they were so weird and twisted and I absolutely loved it. And so I'm really excited to read this one. It's gotten a lot of good reviews, a lot of good press. Um, basically, it's this woman who decides she's just with the help of a terrible psychiatrist, just going to drug herself into uh, hibernation for a year because she just doesn't want to deal with life. And that just seems like the perfect 2020 read. So, <laughs> and then this is another one that I've had. I mean, all like I said, all of these are except for rest and relaxation. All of these are ones that have been on my shelf for a long time. This is the other nonfiction that I really want to read, Men Explain Things to Me by Rebecca Solnit. This is a collection of essays and she is, I think she's kind of the one that like, like came up with the term mansplaining and the title essay is about the time that she was at a party and she was talking to some guy who was explaining an article that he had read to her and she said oh yeah I wrote that article and he was like no no listen let me explain it to you and like she literally wrote the article that he was like trying to tell her about and like who hasn't who among us has not had an experience like that so I'm thrilled to read this it's been on my list for ages longer than it's been on my shelf so finally gonna try to read this I mean it, it should go real quick it's very excited about that Okay, so this is what you need to know about these next three. My ideal book <laughs> is a quiet, character-driven, relational story where nothing really happens. 
I know a lot of people hate those kinds of books, but that is those to me are just chef's kiss. I adore them. And so that's pretty much what these next three are. One of them I think has a little bit more plot than the other two, but I don't need a plot. I just want to read about other humans and human nature and the way that they respond to things that happen in, our, in all of our everyday lives. This one has been um, one that has been recommended to me by a lot of people. That is Crossing to Safety by Wallace Stegner. Uh, from what I can remember, because it's been a while, but I know it's one I really want to read. Uh, this is about four friends and they go on a road trip, I believe, but they're like in their 60s, I think. Um, and they're just kind of, it's just about their friendship together, their life together as friends. And uh, that's all I need to know. <laughs> I'm here for it. So Crossing the Safety by Wallace Stegner. And then this one, um, one of my good friends who's actually a PA, a physician's assistant, said that she had to read this one in PA school. And I got it at a used bookstore forever ago. And I've heard nothing but great things about it. It's it's a hefty little booger, 650 pages. So this one could take me a very long time at the rate that I'm reading lately. But uh, that is uh, Cutting for Stone by Abraham Verghese. I think I'm saying that right. Forgive me. Correct me if I'm not, um, please. Okay, it says, Twin brothers born of a secret union between a beautiful Indian nun and a brash British surgeon. And then... Both their parents basically, in one way or another, leave them. Basically, they come of age. It says, uh, it's Ethiopia hovers on the brink of revolution. So it like crosses, it like it's sweeping and epic kind of in like their, the way that they try to make sense of who they are and their identity and all of that, I guess, kind of. I don't know. We'll see. But it just sounds so fantastic. I think this one has a little more plot than maybe the other ones. But again, this is everything I love in a book. Yeah. So I'm excited about that one. And then the last one. It's time. It's time for this one. It's been a long time. It's been a long time coming. And I think it's time. It is Jaber Crow by Wendell Berry. This is part of the Port Williams series. Wendell Berry. Oh, Wendell Berry. If you've not yet read Wendell Berry, I don't know what you're doing as a reader. <laughs> the first thing I read of his was Hannah Coulter a few years ago, and that was like in the winter, fall, winter time, and it was in my top five of that year. I, it's just, his writing is so quiet and insightful and just he's one of those writers who can look at the ordinary and the mundane and pull out the most beautiful and poignant and moving thoughts and ideas and just he just notices. He notices. He's a writer who notices. And I love that. Hannah Coulter was stunning. Absolutely stunning. And that was also part of the Port William series, which is basically like, they're like loosely connected. They're just all these characters who people who live in this fictional town in Kentucky called Port Williams. Um, and so Jaber Crow shows up in Hannah Coulter, but there's no, like, you don't have to read them in any kind of order or anything like that. So my husband read this, I think, last year and just said he loved it more than Hannah Coulter. If you follow Kendra Dashi, the Lazy Genius, she has, she just read this, I think, at the beginning of quarantine. And this is not at all her kind of book. She's very much like a sci-fi fantasy, give me all the plot kind of reader. And she loved this one. And so I am just thrilled. Wendell Berry is a treasure. He's a national treasure. And so I can't wait to jump into this one. So Jaber Crow by Wendell Berry. And that's it for now. <laughs> um, I have some others in mind. Um, I have a couple 
on my audio list uh, that I'd like to get to. I have a thriller and I have a couple of anti-racism type books that I want to work my way through as well as I'm working my way through these novels. Like I said, I'd like to have one of each going. So that's what I hope to read before the end of the year. And at least those, which feels like a stretch goal, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> the way my reading life has been this year. So we'll see how that, go how that works, uh, how that, if, if that happens and I'll report back, don't worry, at the end of every month. So yeah, so that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know one thing that you're hoping to read uh, in the next few months. Um, I would love to know what's on your TBR or what's the best book you've read lately. Let me know. Again, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you feel so inclined and I will see you soon. Bye!